My name is Nico Mabasa. I am a postdoctoral researcher at Rhodes University in Grahamstown, South Africa. I will be speaking about a project that I'm working on as part of my postdoc, and this project is on developing a course. I will be speaking in particular about the module that I'm involved in developing. So the title of my talk is called A Module on Integrated Multitrophic Aquaculture in the Aquavitae Massive Open Online Course. So this project is on the development of a massive open online course, which is abbreviated MOOC, M-O-O-C, and it is on sustainable aquaculture for low trophic species. This project is done in collaboration with the Aquavitae Consortium, and it is led by UIT, the Arctic University of Norway. This course will be a completely online course, meaning there are no face-to-face -face classes or teaching sessions. It is a master's level course, meaning students have to have some background in a similar or related field such as biology so that they can understand the concepts that will be discussed in this course. Once it has been developed, this course will be made available on the Open EDX platform, which is completely free of charge, and it will be offered in English, so an understanding of English is essential. This will be a completely self-run course, meaning there will be no teachers, or moderators in the background. And as such, student interaction is compulsory because that is how students are going to get feedback on their learning. The, but the particular module that I'm involved in developing is called Integrated Multitrophic Aquaculture, abbreviated IMTA, and I will be referring to it as IMTA from here onwards. So under the IMTA module, there will be four topics that will be discussed. The first topic is general IMTA concept. Here we're going to talk about the background of IMTA. So what is IMTA? IMTA is the culturing together or co-culturing of species, which may be animal or plant species, that have different trophic levels, that are from different trophic levels, meaning they feed at different levels. For example, this fish or this aquaculture species gets fed, it produces waste, and the waste that it produces becomes nutrients or resources for another species that feeds below it in the trophics, in the trophic levels. And we will talk about that, the background, the general concept of IMTA, we will talk about the history of IMTA, how you decide uh, on species to integrate in an IMTA system. We are going to relate IMTA to the circular economy. We will talk about monoculture and polyculture, comparing and contrasting those. We will also discuss how waste is managed in an IMTA system. The second topic will be sea-based IMTA, and here an IMTA system is run in the sea, usually in cages, as is shown in the picture at the top. So these pictures are from an IMTA project that is currently taking place in Saldana Bay in the Western Cape of South Africa, where mussels are grown on these rafts together with a macroalgae, Gracilaria, which can then be used in... Um, feed for aquaculture species so nutrients are recycled that way so under this topic we're going to give scenarios or case studies of sea-based imta systems that are systems or operations that are operating in south africa as well as france and we're going to talk about the benefits the challenges as well as prospects of these systems the third topic is land-based imta and in land-based IMTA, seawater is pumped from the sea onto tanks which are built on land. The picture, the, the example in this picture is of a land-based IMTA system in a, an abalone farm in South Africa called Wild Coast Abalone. So seawater is pumped onto these tanks in which abalone are grown. And the wastewater from these tanks is then used to grow another type of macroalgae, which is called ulva. And ulva is then used as an ingredient in, in, the, in, the, in the production or making of feed for abalone. So nutrients are recycled in that way. So under land-based IMTA topic, we're going to give scenarios or operations of land-based IMTA systems in Brazil, Spain, as well as South Africa. We will compare them, we will talk about the benefits, the, the challenges, as well as prospects of these operations. 
The fourth and final topic under this module is Biofloc IMTA. Biofloc are aggregates of bacteria, algae, or protozoa which are held in a matrix with particulate organic matter for the purposes of treating water or cleaning water. So under this topic, we are going to give an introduction of what Biofloc IMTA is. We are going to talk about potential species that can be integrated in a Biofloc IMTA. We are going to talk about how a Biofloc IMTA system is managed. And we are also going to give examples of Biofloc IMTA systems. And here we are also going to talk about the advantages, the disadvantages and prospects of these kinds of systems. Dr. Terry Chopin, who was one of the people that coined the phrase integrated multitrophic aquaculture, had this to say about it. The concept of IMTA being highly flexible and ever evolving cannot consequently be reduced to a short bureaucratic, bureaucratic definition. Basically meaning IMTA should not be fixed, but should be allowed to evolve. It should not have a fixed definition, but should be allowed to evolve. So in line with that, I am going to give you two examples of non-conventional forms of IMTA systems that are currently, um, that exist in South Africa. So the first one that I'm going to show you is a commercial scale system. And this is currently running at South African breweries in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa. And in this system, they take brewery wastewater and then pump it onto these structures, which are constructed wetlands planted with crops. As the wastewater passes through these wetlands, the crops take up nutrients from the wastewater and the product that comes out at the, at the end is a cleaner product or cleaner water, which can then be used to, to, for other purposes such as aquaculture. So if you look at the back, there is a tunnel. The tunnel has uh, fish tanks in it and treated wastewater from this constructed wetland is then pumped onto the, into the tanks and fish are grown in there. So it is a non-conventional form of IMTA. However, it is, non, it is IMTA. The second example is my own backyard IMTA system that I have running in my backyard. So that is me in my lab coat standing in front of the rice paddy. So the rice at the back is Kilombero rice from Malawi. And this rice is grown in a rice paddy, which is a raceway. So water from a dam that has been fertilized with chicken and duck manure gets pumped onto this rice paddy. It travels the entire length of, uh, of the raceway. And as it travels, the, the rice takes up nutrients from, from this water. And by the time the water comes out at the end, it is cleaner and good enough, or the water quality is right to use for growing fish. Cleaner water comes out there and it flows into this pond, which has fish. If you look, there are little speckles of orange there, those are Oreochromis mozambicus. And here is a clearer picture of a fish that I caught from the pond to show that it is actually fish. And there is a dragonfly which has also decided to make this rice paddy its home. So this is a non-conventional form of IMTA. However, it is IMTA. So that was a moment of shameless self-promotion on my side. So how the module will be structured is um, as a student, when you go onto the online platform to, to complete this course, you will choose the module IMTA. And under this module, there will be a video, which is an abstract like video, which just uh, gives a, a summary of what IMTA is. And then you will go on to uh, the, parti the, the specific types of IMTA systems. The first one, C-based IMTA. So here you will find a, a C-based IMTA scenario under which there will be a video which you will watch about that scenario. After the video, the student will then have to complete a short quiz. After that, there will be reading material which will, be, uh, will have been uh, prepared. The students will have to go through this reading material and then complete a slightly longer quiz. And these quiz questions are um, 
short questions um close-ended questions so multiple choice either or or just something with a straight simple answer after that there will be additional material which can be scientific publications uh, websites or other resources that 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 can be provided under this the topic and and uh, the students will have to go through all this material so this structure will be similar for all the topics under the imta module so it'll be the same for land-based imta as well as biofloc imta and um, after the student has gone through all the material under the different topics there will be an advanced assessment that they will have to complete so here is what they will get uh, open-ended questions or topics that they will have to discuss and form opinions on and these opinions will have to be supported with evidence so their opinions have to be evidence-based the evidence will have been gathered from all the reading and video watching and all the learning that they will have done before getting to to the end of, of the module so at the end of this uh, of this module the outcomes that we are hoping for is that the students should be able to understand the basic concept of IMTA. So understand what IMTA is and, and, and how do you go about uh, starting an IMTA system. We also hope that the students will be able to identify different possible applications of IMTA in different environments as well as different geographical areas. The students should also be able to identify technical and scientific requirements for each of the different scenarios. So different species have different requirements. Um, different fish, for example, have different uh, biofiltration requirements. So the students should be able to identify that by the end of this module. And they should also be able to describe the benefits, the advantages and disadvantages and the implementation difficult difficulties of uh, these IMTA systems in all the different scenarios. So thank you, that is it for my talk. And if you have any questions um, about the IMTA module, you can direct them to me, and that is my email address on screen. And if you have any questions about the entire course or other modules in the course, you can address this to Adriana, and there is her email address on screen. So thank you very much. And um, in closing, I can just say that for a lot of us working on this on the on this project, it's our first time working on a project like this, a, a, a cost development uh, uh, project. So any feedback or, or, or inputs or opinions would be very welcome, ways in which we can improve our approach or any additions that you think may be beneficial, that would be very, very appreciated. So I will just leave you with a little video, my thank you video with my aqua petty. Thank you.